All right, so I'm going to go uh, into this idea that accumulated degree days kind of like saving up money. So if you understand what I'm talking about with accumulated degree days, maybe you've done it in another class or something like that, go ahead and skip this. This is just going to be examples. If you don't understand, or if you're like me, where it took me several months or years of just pulling my hair out to figure out what the hell I'm talking about with accumulated degree days, watch this video. This helped me understand it once I figured it out. So you can think of accumulated degree days for flies just as if you were saving up money. So remember from last time I talked about this is you, hi you, and you want to buy a few things. Say you want to buy some flowers for your mom, you want to buy this cute notebook, this nice necklace, a blender, and a bike. But you're going to buy these things in order, okay? So you need to buy these five things, and each one of these things costs a certain amount of money. So you know exactly how much it's going to cost. Okay? There's no dickering, there's no lowering the price or anything like that. You need this amount of money, okay? So if you have a low paying job, it's going to take you longer to save up this money than if you have a high paying job. Just like with the degree days, every stage in insects needs a certain number of degree days. There's no dickering. There's no uh, making a deal. They need what they need. The price is what the price is. Okay? And if it's warmer, they're going to be able to save up those degree days faster than if it's colder. Okay. Same idea here. Now, you don't have all this money right now. You have to work for your money. So you have to figure out what you're going to need. Let's say you want to buy just your mom the flowers. You know that's going to cost you 25. But if you want to buy the flowers and the book, you got to add those things up. The flowers, the book, the necklace, you got to add all three of those things up. So that's pretty easy to do, right? I mean, it's, it's just simple math, just adding. So if you want to buy the flowers, you need 25 bucks. If you want to buy yourself the flowers in the book, that's $25 plus $45. So that equals $70. Flowers, book, and necklace, $130 that you need to save up. Uh, the flower, book, necklace, and blender, $225. Now, this with the cycle and stuff, I mean, that, that's a pretty visual, but it's kind of messy. You, you don't really have anything all organized. So we discovered spread, <laughs> spreadsheets, or, you know, Bill Gates did, whatever. So uh, the we can make a spreadsheet. We can make a table with all this information in it that makes it easy for us to understand. So here I've got my price. Uh, I've got at the top here, the, here's all the different things that I want to buy. Here's what they cost individually. Now, if I wanted to figure out how much they're going to cost to buy each one in order, I can just add them up. So if I just want the flowers, it's going to cost $25. The flowers in the book, $70. Book, flowers book necklace, $130. Book necklace blender, $225. All five of the things are going to cost me $375. This is a nice little reference sheet to have, isn't it? Because, okay, I eventually want to buy these things. This is what I'm going to need in order to buy them all at once, or if I can only buy a few, whatever. So you can refer to this. Let me tell you, in the next video, I'll, show, I'll be showing you how to set up this exact table, except with the insect degree days, what is necessary for them to get through each stage. Huh. All right. Now, what can we do with this information? Once we have this nice, neat little table, we can then say, look at our hours. Let's say we work an hourly job. Okay, we get paid a certain amount every time we go into work, and it's going to change a little bit each day when uh, we go in. Some days we, we work more hours, some days we work fewer. Cool. So if we know how much we get paid, then we can figure out how long it's going to take us to uh, save up these, this, this amount of money as long as the schedule has been posted. So let's say, let's say we're going back to March and the schedule has been posted. You know that you're going to be working March 21st through 22nd, 7th without a break. That's going to suck, but you know, you're going to make some money because you really want a bike and all these other things. Cool. Now, unfortunately, in order to live, uh, the, when you get your paycheck, bills have to come out of it. So you, you have figured out that every day you work, you need to pay $40 of that paycheck in bills. And there's your social security and the taxes and you know your electricity and whatever else. It always just has to come out of your bills. If you don't make any money, you don't have anything to uh, take away. So you, you don't have to take anything away. But these bills are like your uh, the insect's threshold temperature. Right? You don't get to save up any money until after you pay your bills. The insects don't get to save up any degrees until they've reached that threshold temperature. So remember, we got our degree days, right? That's the uh, number of degrees above a minimum threshold. So when you're saving up money, that's the number of dollars above your minimum threshold or above your bills. 
So if you just make $1 in a day above these bills, you only made $41 that day, and you do that every day, it's going to take you a long time. It's really cold. It's going to take the insect a long time to develop. If you make $1,000 above this 40 every day, then, man, you're going to be done really, really quickly. Same thing. If it's really, really warm with the insects, they are going to make up this uh, their degree days really, really quickly. All right. So we can, again, use our handy dandy spreadsheet. Here's what everything costs. Here's our little table that we just uh, figured out. We can do the same exact uh, calculation. We get our paycheck. We subtract out our bills. And we times it by a unit of time. Hey, one day. Hey, this looks really familiar. It's almost like it's average temperature minus the threshold times the unit of time. Hey, that's our degree day or degree hour calculation. Cool. Same calculation. So let's do that for every day. Let's say it's March 21st. We go to work. We get our daily paycheck because that's how things in this imaginary world works. We pay our 40 bucks. We are going to earn $34 from that paycheck now that we can do whatever we want with. Now, we want to save this up. So we've put it in our piggy bank. So we have our accumulated money. So accumulated money, AM just like accumulated degree days or ADD. So we got $34 in our piggy bank now. If we broke that thing open, March 21st, we'd have 34 bucks that came out. Let's do it for the next day. So on the next day, we have $78 in our paycheck. We subtract out our 40 bucks for bills. Now we earned $38 on this second day. We're gonna add that to our piggy bank and those two together, if we were to break up that piggy bank on March 22nd, it would be 34 plus 38. Because we had 34 before, we added in 38. Now we got 72 total. Cool. So we just keep adding money to this piggy bank. And this number over here is going to be the total that will be on this date if we break up on that piggy bank. So let's do it for March 23rd. March 23rd, we earned $70 that day. We uh, subtract out our 40. We've got 30 to spend on whatever we want. Put it in our piggy bank. Now we have a total of 102. So we can do this for every single day all the way down. And that's what it would look like. So we earn 27 on March 24th, 34 on the 25th, 38 on the 26th, 42 on the 27th. And then it just kept getting bigger and adding up. We have accumulated money. So by the end of the week, we have saved $243 in this piggy bank. And that's after all of our bills are paid, after our threshold is met. Ah, so this is some really useful data. Because what we can do now is we can start going through and saying, all right, I want to start buying some of this stuff. When am I going to be able to save up enough money to get what I want? So let's start with the very beginning. Let's say you want to buy your mom some flowers. On what day are you going to have enough money to go to buy those flowers for mom? So we can use these two tables that we just spent all that time making up. So we start with this table down here. So we got our price. We know that the flowers are going to cost $25. So our target money is now 25 bucks. So then we can go to our, uh, our posted hours here. We know how much money we're going to earn on each day. We're going to know how much money then is going to go into the piggy bank. We need to find when we meet this $25, when we have enough money in our piggy bank to pay 25 bucks. So if you look over here, you find that happens on day one. We earned $34. That's more than $25. You're able to afford those flowers. Fantastic. So if someone were to ask you, when are you going to uh, have enough money to buy these flowers? You could say on March 21st. Excellent. So what if, however, you want to buy your mom the flowers and yourself a little treat? You also want to buy a book. So, okay, let's again go to our table down here. The flowers in the book cost $70 total. So you're going to need 70 bucks. So again, let's go to our schedule here. Okay, so on the first day, you have accumulated, let's say you broke open your uh, piggy bank on the 34th, on the uh, March 21st, you have $34. That's not enough to get both things. It was enough to get the flowers, but not enough to also get the, the notebook because you need at least 70 to do that. Okay, so day two, though, you've added some money. So if you break it up on March 22nd, you have $72. That's plenty of money to get both the necklace and the book. So you are able to buy the necklace and the book on March 22nd. Let's do it again. Let's say you want to buy your mom the flowers, yourself a book, and yourself the necklace. Okay, so you need $130 in order to do that. When is that going to happen? Again, not on the March 24th. That's $34. Not enough. March 22nd, still not enough. March 23rd, nope, still not enough. March 24th, still not enough. Ah, oh, there it is. 
So by March 25th, you have earned enough money to buy yourself the, uh, the book, the flowers, and the necklace. All right. Now, now you want to buy yourself the book, the necklace, the blender, and your mom the flowers. So let's go through it again. Same exact idea. How much do we need? Checking here, we need $225. When is that going to happen? Let's see. Not there, not there, not the 163. 201 is still under 225. 243. Okay? So we will have enough money to buy all of those things on March 27th. Now, what if you want to buy yourself all of those things? You want the the flowers for your mom, the book, the necklace, the blender, and your new bike. Yeah. When are you going to have enough money to do that? So one more time, let's go through this exact uh, walkthrough. You need $375 to get all of those things. So let's find out when we have that. Not on the 34th, on the 7th, no, it's just, uh, oh, we need more data. So you've only had a week now of uh, scheduled work time. This is all that they, you, your work puts out at a time, just a week ahead. You don't know what your next schedule is. So you have no idea when you'll have enough money for this. And you don't know if you're going to work at all next week. Schedule isn't out. So, okay. So you need more data in this case. So it is possible to predict when you can purchase something based on your own work schedule. However, what happens if you call in sick? What happens if um, you say you need more data? They haven't made up the uh, schedule yet. This can get really, really confusing. If things change, this prediction is just that. It's a prediction. What makes it much more accurate is to look back in time. So let me show you what I mean. Okay, so here we are. We've got our thing in March 27th. Blah. Let's say today is March 27th. Okay, now we this is our schedule for next week. But let's say we've gone through the week now and we are able to write a schedule on what we made each day. So now look, I'm going backwards. So today is March 27th. So today my paycheck was $82 and I do the exact same paycheck minus bills times the unit of time. So I know how much money I earned today and uh, I can put that in the piggy bank. Now yesterday, I know how much I earned. I earned $38 yesterday. Day before, I earned $34. Day before, I earned 27. So now I can just go backwards. So that's literally the same uh, same spreadsheet that I had before, except switched. So now I'm in the future. This has already happened in the past. Let's work backwards. Today, 26th, 25th, 24th. So now I know how much. So again, I can figure out how much money I accumulated on each day. So on this day, I added $42. So today's the 27th. I added $42. Now, if I were to put what I got yesterday in the piggy bank, let's say I'm not putting it in the piggy bank. I'm doing what I normally do and leave it in my pocket or leave it on the dresser or whatever. But I'm picking up money now. Let's, let's go what I got from my paycheck yesterday. So I added to the piggy bank. Now I have $80 total. So again, that's 42 plus 38. Now let's add what I got on the 25th. That's 114. 34 plus 38 plus 42 is 114. And I earned $27 on the uh, 24th, 30 on the 23rd, et cetera, et cetera. So now, I mean, it's the same amount of money that I did before, right? Over this week, I earned $243 minus our, minus our bills total. It's just this way I'm looking back in time because I know exactly what I've done now instead of trying to predict forward in time. Okay, so let's say I want to know this question. Today, you bought your mom flowers. When did you start saving up for this purchase? Okay, so if you bought your mom flowers today, you needed to start saving up for this purchase on what day? So we just go through exactly what we did before. Let's check our table. We need $25 in order to buy your mom uh, this uh, purchase. Okay, when did I earn this $25? Oh, I, I just earned it today. Cool. So I bought my mom flowers today. I just used today's money. So March 27th is the date that I had to uh, uh, figure out or I had to... Um, start saving up the money. Cool. Let's do it again. Let's say um, today is March 27th, but today I bought my mom flowers and myself a notebook. When did I have to start saving up money? Which one of my paychecks? What dates of paychecks did I have to use? So I got myself flowers and a notebook. 
Okay, so again, we can go down here, flowers plus book, that's $70, so I'm gonna need $70. So I didn't have enough money to, to use just today's paycheck. I also had to add in yesterday's paycheck because between the two, I have $80 total in my piggy bank. So I needed to start saving on March 26th in order to buy the uh, um, flowers in the notebook today. All right, let's do it again. Now, let's say I want to buy flowers and notebook and a necklace. When did I have to start saving up for the purchase? So again, today is March 27th. Okay, go through the thing. We need $130 total to do this. Don't have that enough today. Didn't have enough yesterday. Didn't even have enough if I started saving up on the 25th. I had to go all the way back to the 24th in order to have enough money today to purchase this, uh, the, these three items. Okay, now what if I wanted to add on that blender? Let's do it again. We need the flowers, the notebook, the necklace, and the blender. When did I start saving up? Today's the 27th. Didn't have enough today. Not yesterday. Not the day before. So I needed 225. Okay, so March 24th, nope, not enough yet. Uh, March 23rd, not enough yet. March 22nd, not enough yet. Ah, there it is. Okay, so I needed it. I needed to save up on um, March 21st in order to get all of this money. Okay, so I needed to be on March 21st. Cool. Now, what if I want to buy all of those things? Again, so let's say today's March 27th. All right, I uh, don't have enough, so it's gonna cost 375. Need 375. Okay, 42 today, no, 80 if I did two days, three days, 114 on the, oh, the whole week worth of money is still not enough to, for me to afford the, uh, the, all these five things on the uh, 25th or on the 27th. So what I need to do is I need more data. What's nice about having, um, working in the past, working backwards like this, is that I can get more data. It's already passed, today's March 27th, so I can look back at my records and I can say, okay, what was my schedule last week? So let's add on a little bit more data. So let's say March 21st, so let's say on March 20th, I had a day off, I didn't make any money. Okay, so I earned zero, didn't add anything to the piggy bank. On March 19th, I worked a lot, oh man. So I earned 110 extra dollars, added that to the piggy bank. March 18th, March 17th, see how that goes? So again, I need, $375 in order to buy all these things, okay? When did I need to start saving up for this purchase? You got bam, bam, no, 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 no. So we know it was March 21st, didn't add anything there, okay? So now we've got uh, $353. Oh, that's so close to our 375, but not quite yet. Uh, on March 18th, I've got uh, 414. So now March 18th is the day when I need uh, to start saving up. So I'm saying things in so a, a bit backwards here, right? So what I am doing is I'm saying if, if I looked at today, when in the past, given all of this, all that I know about how much money I made, when did I have to start saving up in order to meet my goal of buying this thing. This is literally all we do with accumulator degree days. And over the next lecture, I will show you exactly how we do that. Let me know if you have any questions.